With Grace Common Factor and grouping, we've opened the door to factoring. So we're trying to undo multiplication of one on two and two on two. Our ultimate goal, we wanna be able to factor ax squared plus bx plus c. Here, right now, we're gonna work on just basic techniques. Ultimately, we'll get the quadratic formula, which can factor any quadratic in this form. But let's start at the beginning. So let's consider x squared plus 5x plus 6. We'd like to factor this. Since this leads with an x squared, we want to factor something like x plus something times x plus something else. So let's say x plus m times x plus n. The first thing I can try is just to FOIL this and see if we can find an m and n that match the numbers in our quadratic. So the idea is going to be, well, what do we get when we FOIL this first, outside, inside, last? We have x squared for first, outside's nx, inside's mx, last is mn. If I put the x term together, okay, so we'll have coefficient m plus n, and then I'm just going to match to our original quadratic. So I'll have to have m plus n equal to 5 and m times n equal to 6. In general, we're going to want to organize this nicely. The idea, the tough part is going to be to factor the m times n. So that's going to give us our big limitation on what we're trying to do. I'm going to consider all possible ways to factor 6. So I want to put this in a table. Without using negatives yet, the ways to factor 6, I can go with either a 1 and a 6 or a 2 and a 3. If I check each of these cases, so what we're interested in is trying to get an m plus n equal to a 5, and there's no guarantee that this is going to work. But here, with 1 and 6, I get a 7. With 2 and 3, I get a 5. And so the 5 is what we're looking for. 2 and 3 are going to be what works. We take the 2 and 3, and we drop them into an x plus times an x plus. So we'll get x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, so that's just coming back to the original question. Of course, we should FOIL a check. So we want to wind up back here. And note, for instance, if we take 2 times 3, we get the 6. If I take the inside, a 2x, and the outsides, a 3x. To add them, you get 5x, as promised. So that's going to be our process for phase 1. What we're going to do... Okay, we're working on x squared plus bx plus c. If you suspect you're going to need this, you should always check for a greatest common factor. So while it might not look immediately like this applies, if things come out, you may discover that the problem is easier than it looks, and you're just in this case here. Once I identify b and c, okay, b is going to be the m plus n, c is going to be the m times n. I want to set that up in a table. Now, what goes in the table will depend on the signs of the B and the C. You could make a no card with this for all the different cases, but sometimes better to just talk yourself through it. So we'll just look through a bunch of the cases where we change these up. Now, once you find your M and N, if you can find it at all, we drop it in X plus X plus, and then you check your answer by foiling. Now, let's try x squared minus 7x plus 10. So here the b is a minus 7, the c is a 10. I set up our table, and what I'm looking for, all possible ways of factoring 10. So we've got 1 and 10 and 2 and 5 if we don't use negative signs. We add to try to get to the minus 7. Okay, so we'll get an 11 and a 7. And you'll note, I've got 7, but I don't have minus 7. Well, the trick is, is once you find the number without worrying about the plus minus, if it doesn't match, well, you just change the sign of both of the original M and N. So to make this work, I'll go with, instead of 2 and 5, minus 2 and minus 5. If we multiply them, we still get 10. If we add those, we get the minus 7 that we're looking for. We drop into x plus x plus, so I get x minus 2 and x minus 5. And finish, we FOIL a check. So again, what we do, 
minus 2 times minus 5 is going to give us the 10. The insides of minus 2x, the outsides of minus 5x to get a minus 7x. So that works out. Next example, let's try x squared minus x minus 12. Here the b is minus 1, the c is minus 12. So we're trying to factor minus 12 in a way that the factors add up to a minus 1. We set up our table. I'll start with 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, then it flips. I also note I want to get to minus 12, so I need one of my factors to be negative. Minus 1, 12, minus 2, 6, minus 3, 4. We add those, we get 11, 4, 1. We're almost where we want to be. So what I'll do is I'll change the factors for minus 3 and 4 to 3 minus 4. And when we check, if I add, I get a minus 1. If we multiply, we get a minus 12. x plus x plus, that'll give me x plus 3 times x minus 4. We check our work, so we're going to FOIL. So for the first, we get x squared. Outside, I get minus 4x. Inside, I get 3x. Last, we have 3 times minus 4 for a minus 12. If we add the inside and the outside, we get a minus x, and we notice all the parts of the original are present. So that checks our work. Let's try another one. I have 6x to the 4 minus 18x cubed minus 24x squared. Here, we're not in the x squared plus bx plus c pattern. I note, though, we might be able to pull out a greatest common factor here. So remember, that's always your first step. We look at the numbers, 6, 18, and 24. I could pull a 6 out of there. And for the powers of x, we have x to the 4, x cubed, and x squared. Lowest powers in x squared, so I factor that out too. That leaves us with x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now I could factor this, or at least try to. We have b equal to minus 3. I have c equal to minus 4. We set up our table. We're trying to factor minus 4 into factors that add up to a minus 3. I'll start with, okay, we have 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. To get to a minus 4, 1 needs to be negative. So I'll use minus 1 and 4, minus 2 and 2. We add, we'll get 3 and 0. So we're almost there with the first one. I just need to change signs on our factors. So that'll go to 1 and minus 4. We add, we get a minus 3. We multiply, we get a minus 4. These are the factors we're looking for. So x plus, x plus, I have x plus 1, x minus 4 for our answer. Again, we'll FOIL to check. So for the first, we have x squared. For the outside, minus 4x. For the inside, x. And then for the last, minus 4. We add the inside and the outside. We get a minus 3x. And we note we have all the parts for the answer inside of the parentheses. And then if we were... Technically, factoring this all the way, we would put a 6x squared out in front of these two factors. Now, what do we do when the lead term is not x squared? For instance, if we have 3x squared plus 7x plus 2, we could try to pull out a greatest common factor, but we're not going to get anything. So that would be a 1. Let's think about what the answer looks like. We have x plus x plus, but to get to a 3x squared, we're going to need to have something in front of the x's. Now, note it can't just be anything. The only way I can get to a 3 by multiplying two things together is a 1 and a 3. So that would be taking care of what would go in the first. If we're doing x plus x plus, for the last, we have to get to the 2. The only way I can multiply two things together to get a 2, that's going to be a 1 and a 2. So what we're going to try to do is take our x plus x plus, we'd have things in front of the x's now, 
and try to put the one three in the first slots, the one two in the second slots, and get it so that the outside and inside go to seven x. Possibilities, I could have three x plus two times x plus one. Outside plus inside goes to three x plus two x, giving me a five x, and that's not what I'm looking for. I want a seven x. Note, there are only these two possibilities to check because if we always make sure the 3x is the first part of the first term, that forces x to be the first part of the second term, and then it's either 2 and 1 or 1 and 2. Now we go 3x plus 1, x plus 2, outside plus inside is going to be 6x plus x. We get the 7x that we're looking for. So we get our answer, 3x plus 1, x plus 2, and of course we should foil off on the side just to check away from all of this work. Let's try 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. Again, when we think about what the answer has to look like. It's going to be an x plus x plus with things in front of the x's now. So i got to think about how I break up 4 into two factors and how I break up 3 into two factors. Now let's focus on the 3 first. So again, with the 3, like over here, the only way that can split up is a 1 and a 3. You'll note I have to be able to get to a minus 8. So if I go with just 1 and 3, that's going to give me a plus here, and I can't use that. I can use minus 1 and minus 3, though, to get to the plus 3 and the minus 8. So we're going to have minuses after our x's now. Note this business of playing around with the signs is going to be a feature in trying to factor this. What else can we do? Well, I have to split up the 4 into either a 1 and 4 or a 2 and 2, and then we just check all the possibilities to see if any of them work. If I try x minus 1, 4, x minus 3, okay, so no, we get 3, and we'll get a 4. Outside plus inside is minus 3x minus 4x to get a minus 7x. I want a minus 8x, so that's not what I'm looking for. I go to x minus 3, 4x minus 1. The outside plus inside is a minus x, minus 12x, minus 13x, not the minus 8x I'm looking for. 1 and 4 is not going to work. So we go to 2 and 2. I get 2x minus 3, 2x minus 1. Outside plus inside, we're going to get minus 2x minus 6x. I get a minus 8x. That's what we're looking for, so we found our answer. And again, you should go off on the side and foil that just to verify, but we'll leave that to you. Now, previous board was a lot of guesswork. Is there a more concrete way of doing things? Answer is yes. That's going to be what we call factor by grouping or the AC method. And this just organizes all the guesswork that we were doing into a process. Okay, well, what was our guesswork doing? We were targeting the first and the last by factoring both, and then trying to organize the factors so that we get the outside plus the inside to come out. That's what factoring by grouping is going to do. Now, our method, okay, the steps are going to be, of course, first you always try to factor out a greatest common factor. That'll make your number smaller, which means your table will also be smaller. We're going to go to a table. Okay, the change is going to be instead of using the last as the thing you're going to try to factor, we're now going to take a times c. So that if I had 4x squared minus 8x plus 3, a is 4, c is 3, we multiply to get a 12. Now we're trying to factor that 12 to get to the middle term, which is the minus 8x. Same process as before to fill out the table. So once I get my answer, if the table works, and we're not guaranteed it's going to work, instead of going to x plus x plus, we're going to use the factors that we get to split the middle term. And we'll show you that in a second. Then with that split, we'll get four terms, and then grouping applies. And if you can get the table to work, the grouping is going to work also. Finally, we just check our work by foiling. Now, in the 4x squared minus 8x plus 3, okay, we noted for the table, in the third column, we're going to set up AC, which is going to be 12. I want to factor 12 in all possible ways. We're trying to target minus 8. So what do we do? 
Well, I just run up all the factors of 12. We've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. When we take the sum of the factors, we get 13, 8, and 7. The 2 and the 6 get us to the 8, but I need a minus 8, so I'll just use minus 2 and minus 6 instead. So we get minus 2 minus 6, sums to minus 8, multiplies to the 12, and that's what we're looking for. Now, the common error, we don't want to go to x plus x plus as before. If you were to FOIL, you're going to get x squared, and we're trying to get a 4x squared here. So that's not going to be in the ballpark. Instead, what we do, I'm going to split the minus 8x into minus 2x and minus 6x, okay, our factors with an x on them. Now I've got four terms, I could try to do grouping. So we're gonna pair off and then try to pull out greatest common factors. For the first pair, okay, well we know we can pull out a 2x, that's gonna leave a 2x minus one. In the second pair, we've got minus 6x plus three. Okay, so the three is gonna come out and almost always you're gonna to wanna to leave the minus sign outside the parentheses. So that's gonna be a minus three and then what's left over Note, since we're using grouping and we know it's gonna work, we could cheat, it's gotta be a 2x minus one. If you make that guess, you just check it by distributing in. So I would get minus six x and then minus three on the one is gonna give me the plus three. So that I know if I'm guessing, I'm still getting it correct. The parentheses match, so we could pull that out and that's gonna give me a 2x minus one times a 2x minus three. That's the answer we had before. And of course, you could check it by just foiling to make sure. So you'll note a lot more concrete, a little bit more organized. Let's do one more example. Let's try 6x squared plus 7x minus 3. The AC is going to be 6 times a minus 3, so we get a minus 18. That's what I'm going to try to factor. Now, because I have a minus 18, we're going to need 1 minus 1 plus at all times. And the factors, we factor 18. The possibilities are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6, and then it starts going back to 6 and 3. I'll put the minus on the first of each of these, and then we'll take the sum. So for sums, we're going to get 17, 7, and 3. And I notice that minus 2 and 9 gets to the 7 that we're looking for. That worked. Now remember, we're not going to x plus x plus. Instead, we're gonna split the seven x as nine x minus two x. So I've got four terms. We can do grouping. In the first pair, we can pull out a three x. That'll leave us with a two x plus three. In the second pair, I have a minus two x minus three. That's almost what we want. We know we're trying to get the two x plus three. All I need to do is pull out a minus one. If you're not sure your signs, make the guess, and then go back and see that it works. So the minus one here is gonna to go to minus two x, and then minus three, so that works out. Now, we've got parentheses matching, so we could factor out the two x plus three. What's left over is gonna be a three x minus a one. Okay, and note you can put a one in there as a placeholder to make sure the whole thing doesn't go away by accident. Of course, we would foil this to check, and I'll leave that to you to work out.